Hey, what's up? Just uh, left this up on the board. So very simple, just uh, a window into thought process in how we look at how we spend minutes. Um, that's, uh, I don't, I don't, when, when I do these whiteboards, I don't really expect there to be anything like dramatically earth shattering. Uh, but I do think that very often there's, um, when, at least when I would get to someone, there's, there's some really, really good things that the individual has done or has been advised of or had been treated. But if they're not happy or there's no result at all, it's not because any of that stuff was wrong or any of the stuff that I'm also suggesting is so out there or outside the box. It's more about putting everything together. And, and that's a, um, I think that's the thought process that I'm really trying to get across. Okay, uh, one of the best amateur golfers in the state of Florida. Uh, considering dropping out of a very significant tournament coming up because of significant pain that appears to be uh, associated with wrist extension, right-handed golfer, so it's in his right hand. All right, so we start to think of some things. He gave me this, this uh, little bit of a uh, uh, timeline, okay? So, uh, dating back to November and January, two cortisone injections. Um, in his mind, everything was cortisone. Whether that was true or not, uh, uh, again, I, I'm of the belief cortisone works 100% of the time. Uh, does that mean it's a substantial amount for the or the the correct amount uh, of anti-inflammatory anti for the inflammation? Doesn't always match up. Is it always the correct location? Is cortisone always the correct steroid to use? There are others that have maybe are a little longer lasting, particularly when you talk about uh, using those types of things with, um, with, with a golfer with a hand problem. Gets better every time. And if he takes significant time off, then he feels great. And uh, if, if he gets into a lousy position or a, a shot and it was really jammed back into extension, then, then we have an issue and it comes back. So cortisone is not really helping. It's, it's clearing out the water from the basement, but it's not doing anything to affect the, uh, the, the, the hole in the roof, if you will. Okay. So you see here, you know, we described this, this ebb and flow of sad face, happy face, sad face, happy face, MRI in February. And, and here's what we got. And here's what we were able to provoke. Uh, and then we'll get to the full body stuff, which is obviously uh, significant. So number one, uh, tendinosis on the uh, extensor carpi radialis, okay? Zero symptom provocation with anything. Uh, number two, slight fraying of the TFCC. So that's where we're kind of kind of harp on these things because I don't know of any technique that can directly improve, restore the cartilage, except slight fraying doesn't really sound like a big deal. It shouldn't be something that's always a problem. Um, but if it is, then obviously you start to see we did talk about some things. Now, next, uh, what else was on there? Uh, um, Flexor carpi radialis. No, nah, that's not that's not his issue. Um, we're not re not really able to provoke it, but we certainly put that in our bag. Now, uh, I looked at the MRI then uh, and uh, the radiology report. Didn't see any films, only because it came in this chronology. So I tried to to uh, just stay lockstep with how this individual was telling his subjective story. So uh, had a very significant five iron shot where it was totally fat, his wrist just exploded in his mind and has been in significant pain ever since. He has received other injections some of which he's showing me, like I have no idea what they could be treating. Uh, he described that one physician, he said, show, show me where it hurts, and he just put the cortisone shot right there. I don't, I said, sorry, I don't really know what they were targeting there, but I think we should be able to feel comfortable that at least at this point, it has not been a part of a good result. Uh, he has had acupuncture. Uh, he has had the wrist manipulated with a high velocity technique. You know, every, not, nothing, nothing knocks this out. So we, we're, we're in an interesting place because the only thing that we could provoke that related to anything of substance on the MRI was significant forced uh, uh, field into extension. And if that is the TFCC, except slight fraying just doesn't, it doesn't add up. It didn't, doesn't make perfect 
sense. It could be where we wind up. This individual could be very, very sensitive. The MRI could, be, could have been read a little bit suspect, or perhaps that MRI from February is no longer the same snapshot of what's going on in that wrist. All of these things are very, very possible, none of which we're going to have any ability to confirm or deny until we get another MRI, which is probably not likely. We're in the real world. Um, the only other significant piece Aside uh, uh, from a from a musculoskeletal component, history of label tear, and I think we're going to compartmentalize this uh, label tear as a as a uh, right shoulder stabilization (SMCD) because the motion is brilliant. Remember, this is a great golfer, and uh, even though it's not necessarily from a musculo musculoskeletal pain perspective, he's not in the best shape. Um, you know, this is. This individual's uh, not, you know, this individual's overweight, you know, challenged to, to be committed to training, et cetera, but he's great at golf, and, and we've seen that. And I think, um, it, as an aside, the real bucket commentary, really, of all types of athletes, we've seen, uh, and again, I've made it very, very clear before, in my opinion, the most talented athlete to ever live uh, was a gentleman that I worked with in Philadelphia, and his name is Alan Iverson, and never did anything to generally prepare. Uh, a lot of specific preparation because the dude, uh, like most basketball players, just love to play. And really, what does that tell us? That you can be great at your sport. I don't know that you can be durable without being uh, very adept to general preparation. And I think that's very, very key for the game of golf. I think I think being in shape helps you practice uh, with, with efficiency, which allows you to be consistent. Uh, and I think it allows you to be more robust towards uh, these these injuries, these overuse injuries, or some of these um, mini versions of trauma. That's my opinion. Because obviously, it's very key. You can play the game of golf and be very weak uh, and or very much out of shape. Um, that doesn't mean you're not good at golf. It doesn't mean you can't generate great power. You're just not getting it from, um, you know, from, from F. You're, you're getting it from, from a lot of A, which you're getting from mobility. All right, that's off my soapbox. Let's get back to helping this individual. So, so we've got this label tear on the shoulder. Okay, so maybe it makes sense that the stabilization strategies at the shoulder, the overall fitness, is not making him as robust enough to tolerate these forced extension. Okay, so worst case scenarios at TFCC, MRI is soft, so then that's really his problem. So we're going to say there's a lot of things, every, everything is on the table here. And I don't think we would ever jump directly into anything. But then I drew that line of conservative to aggressive. So we would rest. And he, I said, you already know this. You, you're, you're, you take a rest and your wrist doesn't hurt. That should be, a, that should be on our list. Uh, I don't think that's any kind of a long-term solution. But if you rest and it feels better, then that's a good thing. Uh, then we're going to move into our six buckets uh, train, rehab, sleep, nutrition, uh, load management, and psychology. I don't have any expertise in some of them. Uh, I've got minimal expertise in others, etc. So that's going to be part of any combination of of all of other procedures. I will get to what we did from a re uh, rehab piece, as you see. Uh, treating the pro pronator quadratus uh, seemed to have a dramatic result. But as we move, let's say, the, I, 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 if it is a TFCC then I don't know that anything that we're gonna do is going to regenerate the cartilage with those conservative approaches. We have to move down, the, down the, the line to things that are more aggressive and what we're probably not going to be able to do uh, in a fitness or a physical therapy environment. Doesn't mean you can't do other things to support the process, but we're not gonna change that. So if this is really an, an, an anatomy issue, patho-anatomical, not a whole lot we're going to be able to do with physical therapy, but we're not going to give up, uh, and we'll get back to how treatment uh, fit into this. But then uh, cortisone shots, these dudes had five, a couple of which it made no, absolutely no sense. Um, I don't know that that's continued approach. Five in such a short period of time, it, uh, again, I'm not that concerned when, when cortisone is plugged into a joint space, but if it's going directly into structures, you, you're going to, this is, this is, uh, it's not working, at the very least, it's not working. Okay, other types of things, PRP, uh, if he is getting swelling, I don't know why PRP would be considered. However, PRP with stem cell, uh, that it may have a role in regenerating some, some cartilage uh, at the wrist. Uh, prolotherapy, which is addition, because he asked specifically about that. Again, 
I have no downside to that as long as you're not sticking it in a nerve and leaving it in a, in a nerve. My opinion on prolotherapy is that it can be very, very effective, but however, I think it's the needle that's doing the work and not necessarily uh, the, the, the saline. And obviously we move towards procedure. I typically use the word procedure instead of surgery just because it's a little bit of my own um, wordplay in terms of psychology. Okay, um, nutrition was a significant piece because I said before you do anything, uh, you wanna pick a couple things and really dial in. So training is somewhat a part of his environment. It's just not tumbling. He's not, you know, it does, if the results aren't there, it's from the work you're not, not doing. Uh, so nutrition, and then you think, well, how would we do that? I said, well, if I'm managing it, it would just be very, very simple and very, very low pressure. You know, in the four questions that we've talked about in other videos, are you eating enough calories? Do you have enough protein? Are the carbs supporting your training and where does fat fit? So uh, we have nothing on that. So I said, just start tracking your food and I can start to help you. And obviously I would refer him to other people if this, if the, once this got tumbling, because um, that's about as much as I can do in terms of helping people with nutrition. Maybe just get get the bags loaded onto the plane, but I'm not the one that, that's gonna be the, the pilot. You see in, in extra, um, you know, in red, uh, supplements, that's uh, again something he brought up, and um, I, I don't, I don't have any. It's not, it's not something that I can do. So um, I, I typically shy away from discussing it just so I can't get into uh, any kind of trouble. That being said, I think you know safe, effective use things that are managed uh, by very, very intelligent, credentialed people um, are going to probably uh, have a good role in supporting all of the. Uh, general preparation and work capacity that will allow, number one, the rest of the body to absorb force into the next fat shot, so the TFCC or whatever the anatomy is that's provoking this threat response maybe just isn't as sensitive, and all of those things can can be of use. Um, but uh, after we finished, you know, we talked a lot about training and and um, you know, in terms of what we can and should be doing um, to not provoke the wrist, but also stabilize the shoulder. Obviously, all other forms of training are going to indirectly support this, but uh, I, I needled uh, pronator quadratus, and that's a very interesting piece because uh, no issues in this. You know, it, it, I, I don't necessarily know how to specifically test pronator quadratus without pronator teres, so, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't like a rock. So we treated it, so you got a couple jumps, we know the jump sign, just like cavitation should not be a sign of success or failure in the treatment, uh, but we did get a, a multiple jumps and pain was gone. So at, at the very least, we can say that some percentage of this issue is not from the TFCC. Now, why would we treat the pronator quadratus? Because it's not that this was a pronation issue. It's not like he's pointing directly at this, but if that muscle tissue, and if we look at it as connective tissue, which of course it is, it's, it's contractile connective tissue, but it's still connective tissue. And if it was creating tension as a result from, from trying to minimize extension, then um, I, I think it could become incredibly tense and then almost add to an impingement of the wrist. So if we were to say that the TFCC uh, what could, could impinge in wrist extension, then we should also be able to say what's kind of next to it. That's my thought process. Like what else could be putting tension into the dorsal wrist so that when it extends, it causes this pain and pinch? Well, the pronator quadratus is the next thing there. So in, maybe I should have used some hands first, but I'm like, hey, let me try this. Bang, done and then we're jamming his wrist in, into extension and he didn't have pain. We also treated the very proximal portion of the phenar eminence. Well, why? Well, in my mind, uh, if, if something was impinging from the top, then maybe there was something that, that could also have connections, if you will. And again, I'm thinking a lot of fascia, but I'm just trying to be very global in how we explain this because I don't know exactly what the structure was. I do know that I put it into the phenar eminence and I put it you know, almost along the line of the first uh, metacarpal that goes obviously going into the thumb. Uh, so right now, what we're gonna do is take the next couple of days and do everything he would normally do. And let's see what shakes out. Uh, we might be you know, in one of these situations where we just everything goes 
uh, as planned and, and everything's good to go. If, if the pain comes back, um, then we probably should be re-engaging uh, with his uh, hand surgeon and start to explore some other options. I, I know that uh, stem cells are available uh, for this type of problem, but the MRI is not consistent. That, a lot of things add up that maybe is not the TFCC. So uh, and certainly this is not an active inflammatory process because if you needle a soft tissue, a muscle, and all of a sudden the pain is gone, one needle doesn't you know, take a shop vac and vacuum out all of the inflammation or fluid in a joint space. Uh, cortisone can do that, but cortisone hasn't worked. So uh, thought process here, I, th I, I actually think this is gonna be one of these, you know, hey, like, let's just try something. Um, that was my rationale, that's what made sense. And, and, it's, and it's really about these, these links, these connections to where the, the threat is being, appears to be emanating from, but it may not always be there and it may not always make perfect sense. We should take the approach that everything is connected and if there is uh, excessive tension in one area, if you can temporarily relax that, um, then we'll, uh, I said take, take five pound dumbbell and let's just, get, let, let's just work pronation uh, from a supinated position to neutral. And uh, let's see, let's see what, what shakes loose over the next couple of days. So hopefully that makes uh, some sense uh, as well as making sense that if anybody, anybody, anywhere, ever happens to see a leprechaun, say yeah. <laughs>